welcome guys to yet another episode of active learning with Sajad Pathan and today in this video we are going to look at 10 ECGs these ECGs would be changing the life of your patients if diagnosed properly and as well as yours in your clinical practice and also in your exams all those who are going to sit for the SAQ exams which is the last time when the college is conducting the SAQ exam these 10 ECGs are going to be appearing on your examination the way we are going to look at these ECGs are when the ECG is displayed I want you to pause the video and answer five questions what are the abnormalities seen on the ECG what is your diagnosis what is the pathogenesis of the condition what complication can happen and what treatment is indicated so as soon as the ECGs are displayed on screen pause the video try to answer these five questions and then we will check our answers with the ideal answers which the examiners might have I would recommend strongly to weave the video till the end and hit that subscribe button put in your comments on what you would like to see in my future videos without wasting further time let's look at the first ECG so the question here was what are the abnormalities seen in the ECG so what do you see I see biphasic T waves in V1 V2 V3 and V4 apart from that I do not see any other abnormalities so you could say there are biphasic T waves present in V1 to V4 what is the most likely diagnosis you're right it's Wellens syndrome and what is the pathogenesis involved to display such an ECG so the pathogenesis over here is critical proximal left anterior descending coronary artery lesion okay what complication could arise this patient is at a high risk of developing an extensive anterior wall MI if the patient is symptomatic treat it as a STEMI if the patient is asymptomatic and can wait still treat it as an ACS and refer to cardiology for a PCI let us look at the second ECG what abnormalities do you see in this ECG I see a sagging STT depression in V1 to V5 and AVF there are tall T waves in the anterior leads so what is the diagnosis it is D Winters T wave what is the pathology here again critical proximal left anterior descending coronary artery occlusion please do not write abbreviations as LAD LAD could be taken as left axis deviation as well so write down the full form proximal left anterior descending coronary artery what complication could arise similar to Wellens they are at high risk of extensive anterior wall MI how do you treat it just like Wellens or an ACS if they are symptomatic they go for a primary PCI if they are asymptomatic they go for a PCI which can be a bit delayed maybe on day two or day three to your surprise I'm gonna add on the 11th ECG which is going to come after the second one can you find out what is the abnormality in this ECG if you got it congratulations if you look closely at the ECG there is an ST elevation in the AVR and you will see diffuse STT depression what does the ST elevation in the AVR along with a chest pain or cardiac sounding chest pain signify just like Wellens this is also a critical lesion but not in the left anterior descending but the lesion here this time is either in all the three vessels or the left main these patients are ideal candidate for cabbage these patients go for a artery bypass graft let's look at the third ECG of the day so this is your 14 year old guy who's playing soccer or playing volleyball and suddenly collapses on the field he regains consciousness he never had anything like that there may be positive family history the question could be framed what historical aspects would you want to know in this patient history of sudden cardiac death so 
what abnormalities do you see here you see sharp dagger like q waves in the lateral leads there is also associated left ventricular hypertrophy let me tell you this ecg is classical for a hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy it's an autosomal dominant condition where there is an hypertrophy of the septum near the left ventricle outflow tract and you need to do an echo for diagnosis sudden cardiac death can result due to arrhythmias the treatment is treat them with beta blockers but these patients need an automated implantable cardioverter defibrillator put in if that doesn't work some candidates will go for a surgical myomectomy or a cardiac transplant what is a variant of hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy which is actually not obstructive if you know the answer put your answer in the comment below and wait till the end of this video i'll give you the answer at the end without wasting further time let's look at ecg number four so what is the abnormality seen in this one it's not very very clear but again you can confuse this with valence this patient will come with a syncopal event uh, unlike the valence who comes with chest pain so this patient has a right bundle branch block with a stt moved segment in the v1 v2 v3 there is st depression present in several other leads what is your diagnosis yes you have guessed it right it's brugada syndrome these patients the pathology is sodium channelopathies there are two types but you don't have to remember them type a type b coat type or saddle type but the pathology remains the same this patient needs to be referred to the electrophysiologist to diagnose brugada what is the complication that can happen if you miss this diagnosis they can get sudden cardiac arrest sudden cardiac arrest due to arrhythmias and the treatment just like in hokum put in a automated implantable cardioverter defibrillator device let's look at ecg number 5 what is the abnormality seen on this one if you look closely you will see a very short pr interval there is rapid upstroke of r waves there is wide qrs associated left axis deviation and right bundle branch block is present what is your diagnosis in this patient rapid upstroke of r wave that is your delta waves so wpw syndrome what is the pathology there is an accessory bundle of kent which is conducting impulses from the atrium to the ventricles what complication can happen sudden cardiac death due to arrhythmias how do you treat them please do not give them amiodarone adenosine beta blockers calcium channel blockers or digoxin instead give them procainamide some people say that if they have come with an atrial fibrillation associated with wpw you can use amiodarone but the safest medication here is procainamide you can also use flecainide if the patient is unstable treat it as an unstable tachycardia or unstable bradycardia let us look at ecg number 6 what do you see here you see a prolonged pr interval that is your first degree heart block you see a right bundle branch block and left axis deviation what is your diagnosis the diagnosis is trifascicular block what is the pathology it's a conducting system defect complications could be complete heart block how do you treat it you need to have a permanent pacemaker implanted in this patient if you compare wpw with this one the previous ecg with this one there was only one difference and that was the short pr interval versus a wide pr interval this may get you caught up in the exam so just be careful when you are interpreting them the next two ecgs are your bread and butter and the bread and butter of the cardiologist in your hospital ecg number 7 what is the abnormality seen absolutely right these are the tombstones there are there is massive st elevation seen in v2 v3 v4 v5 one avl 
So this is a ST elevation myocardial infarction. If you look at ECG number 8, again ST elevation seen in the inferior leads and you will see ST depression in the septal leads V1 and V2. If there is an inferior myocardial infarction, do not treat them with GTN because right heart is preload dependent. Treat them with a fluid bolus and your antiplatelets and expedite for a primary PCI. When you get a patient with an inferior volume I, do not forget to take the extensive lateral lead ECGs which is your V7, V8 and V9 and also your right sided ECG leads to be taken. So what are the abnormalities seen in this ECG? We have just discussed that. What is the diagnosis? It is a ST elevation MI. What is the pathology? Pathology here is plaque rupture and thrombus formation in the coronary artery. What complication could arise? Arrhythmias, wall rupture, sudden cardiac death can happen. Pericarditis can happen acutely as well as chronically after 10 days. That is your Dressler's syndrome. How do you treat it? Dual antiplatelets and get them to the cath lab. Second last ECG for this session and that is second last ECG for this session and that is your long QT interval which is quite evident in all the leads. There is also biphasic T waves seen in V1, V2, V3. However, the message here was identifying the long QT interval. What is your diagnosis? QTC prolongation. What is the pathology? Pathology could be congenital QT prolongation, acquired QT prolongation. Congenital is your Romano Ward syndrome and Jowell Lunch Nielsen syndrome. The acquired ones are due to the drugs A, B, C, D, and E. A for antiarrhythmic, B for antibiotics, your macrolides and your quinolones, antipsychotics, antidepressants and anti-emetics, metoclopramide and ancetrin. How do you treat them? Stop the offending agent and observe them. The last TCG for the day. What do you see here? This is polymorphic ventricular tachycardia with oscillating waveform. What is your diagnosis? Tossards de Pontes. What is the pathology? The prolonged QT which predisposes to this arrhythmia Hypomagnesemia could be also a possibility over here. How would you treat? You treat them if they are stable with magnesium. If they are unstable, treat them with cardioversion plus magnesium. And the complication could be they can go into ventricular fibrillation or pulseless ventricular tachycardia. Before we end this video, let's answer the previous questions. What was the variant of hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy but is not obstructive. It is called as Yamaguchi syndrome where the hypertrophy is apical. It's commonly seen in Japan. Lastly, how do you calculate QTC? What is the risk scoring system used in long QT syndromes? And what is your idea about short QT syndrome? Put your answers in the comment below. I wish you good luck for your exams. Study well, stay safe. Please subscribe to my channel, share this video along with your friends and colleagues and I'll see you soon with my next video. Till then, peace.